Today we're going to be taking a look at the Gerino Cube 4 projector. The company behind this product claims it's the brightest 100% sealed portable projector on the market. Now they hit me up a while back asking if I'd like to look at a sample and I thought the style and some of the specs and features looked interesting. So decided to give it a go and make a review video with the sample that they provided. Now this sample is pretty rough. It's not a complete production model, but it should still give decent indication of what to expect from the final product. Now, as this is a Kickstarter campaign from a new company, I always have to preface my review with this warning. Back at your own risk, as with any crowdfunding campaign, a physical product or reward is never guaranteed no matter how well the company communicates. But also it is worth pointing out that this company has been posting regular updates. They've showed plenty of videos and images of the design, the prototypes, the manufacturing process, so on and so forth. So I suggest thoroughly looking through the Kickstarter campaign before committing to funding this project if you are interested. Now to my review. The main things that interested me about this projector was its price point and its features for its class of projector when comparing it to the competitors out there. It's being sold for 200 bucks. It provides anywhere from a 30 inch to 200 inch screen size at 1080p, 60 hertz resolutions. Not too bad, I mean, we're not getting 4K, but it can decode 4K signals and output them at 1080p as well. I mean, that's pretty standard stuff. Now for my testing, you can definitely go a bit larger than 200 inches for the screen size, but for the best clarity, keeping at or below 200 inches is going to be the best. The projector has a brightness of 500 ANSI lumens and supports HDR10. Built in, it has two 5 watt speakers, which to my surprise are actually passable. Most other projectors I've used, including ones that are 10 times the price of this one, have had kind of tinny or crappy or very low sound coming out of the built-in speakers. Now, not to say that the, the speakers on this device are the greatest thing ever, as they are not, but they definitely can be fine for most non-audiophiles out there just looking to enjoy a movie in the backyard or wherever else you want to watch this thing on. You know, in an open space, these speakers, they, they do a good job of allowing everyone to hear clearly within a reasonable amount of space from the projector. Not like you could be a mile away or anything, but it does do a decent job for a small, you know, group. Everybody should be able to hear, you know, what they're listening to, right? Whoa. The night is as bright as the day here. It's totally different from living in the mountains. When does everyone sleep? So it also has a uh, software RAN autofocus and keystone correction built in. Uh, this feature I found fairly interesting and kind of impressive to be honest. Even though the software is still being worked on and bugs being fixed, you know, I'm only testing an early version of it and I thought it worked fairly well. When set up and powered on, the projector will automatically scan the surface that it's projecting to and readjust the focused and shift of the corners to ensure you have a clear image that sits properly um, on the surface that you're projecting on. Now this feature, it comes in handy, but with this early software, I did have a couple minor issues. Now, if the projector is bumped or moved, it will recognize an error to the surface and it will readjust. Now that's nice, it's a cool little feature, but occasionally I have had that happen without anything touching the projector or it being moved. So this is something I, I would hope to expect to be ironed out in the final version, but also at the same time, the feature can be shut off entirely and you could just manually make your own adjustments. I kind of prefer doing it that way myself, but turning it on and letting it do its autofocus and adjustments and then turning that feature off and then you know adjusting it myself is typically the way I've been using it. But yeah, there you go. So the shell that this device is in is made of aluminum and it has a completely sealed LCD optical system, which prevents dust from getting inside the optics and you getting you know, distortions on the screen and whatnot, but it also prevents replacement of the lamp. So this might not be an issue as the company claims that the lamp has 
30 hour, 30,000 hours of life, not 30 hours, 30,000 hours of life. I cannot back up that claim, but that's the claim that they are making. Now they do state it has a dual fan heat dissipation system that is very quiet. And with my testing, it does have a quieter sound than most projectors I've used, uh, at least to me anyway. You can hear it, but they state it's 30 decibels or lower. Not a huge deal. Didn't really bother me, especially with the built-in speakers. If you're using those, you won't hear the fan. At least I didn't anyway. Now, one thing I did notice on the campaign page was a blurb that stated, hot surface, question mark, impossible. And then it talks about that heat dissipation stuff. Now, maybe I'm not understanding exactly what they are claiming, but for sure the surface does get hot over a period of time while it's have been on, right? I mean, it just kind of makes sense. It is encased in metal after all. So that aluminum will take on some of that internal heat. Now you typically won't be grabbing the projector while it's on, so a little heat I don't think is a big deal. And it doesn't get uncomfortably hot or anything. Like I could run it for a couple hours, watch a movie, play some games, whatever, power it off, and then just pick it up around the casing just fine. No big deal. So yeah, it does get a little hot though. Now this projector, it also has a custom built Android TV operating system on an Amlogic T972 single board computer that has two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of storage built in with dual band wireless internet access. I don't typically use these uh, built in Android systems on devices like this, but for my testing, everything worked as expected with streaming services and just how well the system responded while navigating. Um, there was no real issues with any of that. Most will be happy using the built-in system for you know, viewing movies and shows via all their you know, favorite streaming services and apps. But for those who wanna use their own device, on, you know, the system does have one HDMI input, plus it does have one USB and one USB-C. Now, the USB and USB-C ports can be used for data transmission to load up, you know, movie files and whatnot. The USB-C port, though, it cannot provide power. It's only for uh, data transmission. But for my testing, the other USB port had no issue, like, providing power to, like, some of my mini consoles and other devices. So that, that worked for me. Now, there's also a 3.5 millimeter audio jack in case you don't, you know, want to use the built-in speakers you want to use your own speakers or a headset plus it also has bluetooth 5.0 for wireless connectivity of headsets and speakers all that good stuff now from all my testing i, I do have to say the image quality and brightness in a properly dark space looks pretty good for a 200 projector even in daylight conditions with some light bleeding into the room the projection doesn't look too bad but obviously for best results, viewing in a complete dark room is best. I mean, it's projecting light out of it, right? So having any light bleeding in the room is gonna kind of mess up the, the image, soften it up, make it not as bright. So I, I did view this uh, projector on the wall in my garage to decent results um, and also projected onto a black backed projector screen as well. Obviously a nice screen will give the best results but projecting onto most any whitish backdrops will still look pretty good in my opinion. And I think that's how like a lot of people would want to use something like this, where it's not a permanent thing in their house. Just boom, we're busting it out, you know, on movie nights and whatnot, just projecting onto a white wall, even if it's a little textured, it'll look fine. Now, I think what they've shown me for the price here, it's fair for those looking for an entry-level 1080p projector that has more features than a lot of other projectors in the same category and a lot that are priced well beyond this one. It does seem like a decent value, but the only real problem I have is they call this a portable projector. I guess there's some kind of gray area when it comes to calling things portable, but this is not what I'd consider portable. Just because it has a handle to carry it shouldn't give it that title. I mean, was the GameCube a portable console because it had a handle? I don't think so. The projector does not have a built-in battery and it does require to be plugged into an electrical outlet like pretty much any other projector needs to function. The question of portable was the one I saw more often on their campaign's comment section. So understanding exactly what you're getting and what this thing is prior to backing it is a must. 
So overall, I think the projector performs fairly well with its features and the quality of the image that's displayed. I mean, it, it won't replace my main projector that I use, but I definitely could see bringing it over to family and friends' houses for some backyard movie action. The only thing I really wish this device had was some adjustable feet on the bottom front of the device so you can adjust how high or low the projector aims. It sits flat and projects directly in front of it. This caused me some annoyance trying to view it on my projector screen I have installed, so I had to stack it on top of about a four foot surface to get it to display where I wanted it. I guess you could mount this projector as it does have the bottom threads to put on a projector mount or numerous other things, right? But keeping to the kind of portable aspect, I wouldn't want this thing to be permanently affixed to anything. So yeah, I mean, some feet would have been nice. Now for me to get a 200 inch image, I did have to have the projector around eight feet away from the wall, maybe around nine, eight to nine feet seemed to be okay. And I got a decent image. So that's one other thing to note. Now, if you are interested in more details on this product, if you want to take a look, I'll put a link in the description. Check it out. Really do appreciate every single one of you guys. And with that said, we'll catch you next time. Bye.